under the roof of New York's Jacob Javits Convention Center, automakers and their executives from around the world gather to show off their latest wares to thousands of automotive press. What will you drive next? It's all here at the 2016 New York International Auto Show. And over the next hour, we'll give you a sneak peek during the show's press preview from luxury to sports cars, SUVs, trucks, and the latest on automotive driving. So whether you're serious about cars or are curious, well, we'll be rolling down tomorrow's roads. Sit back, buckle up, and hang on as Fox Sports takes you on a ride around the New York Auto Show like you've never seen. Fox Sports is proud to present the 2016 New York Auto Show. Welcome to the New York International Auto Show. Hello everybody, I'm Tor Dietrich. Well, New York might mean taxis and Uber to most of you, but for the automakers, the tri-state area is one of the most important areas in the nation for car sales. And they came loaded with close to 60 introductions to help satisfy that insatiable automotive appetite. And we have our Fox Sports Auto Show team here. Mike Caudill, Nick Miles, and good friend and editorial director for KBB, Jack Nerad. Jack, in LA, we talked about how the automakers were all giggles over their car sales. What are you sensing here? Well, I see hopeful trepidation is the way I would describe it. I mean, people are hopeful that we're going to have another record sales year, but some people are a little concerned that we won't, that the other foot will drop with the economy and maybe things won't be quite as good. And CUVs, SUVs, those are just pushing the whole automotive segment right across the board. I wonder where the uh, whole auto business would be without crossovers, without these SUVs, because that's what people are buying. They're gravitating to those. Sedans are becoming, uh, you know, your grandfather's car. And the performance as well. I mean, we're here in Maserati, we're going to see the Levante. Performance is just crazy these days. I lived through the muscle car era, but this is the golden age of performance. I mean, we're seeing 600 horsepower vehicles, you know, fairly routinely. It's just amazing, the performance out there. Well, Jack, I know you like sports cars, and uh, I like them too. And here to kick things off is Mike Caudill with some sports cars. Mike? Thanks, Tor. The New York Auto Show is full of sports cars and hot rides. From NASCAR to Mopar, it's all here. But if you're looking for an entry-level sports car, this one over my shoulder, it's it. The 2017 Toyota 86. As Toyota charts a new path with its Scion brand, now bringing many of the products in-house, the popularity around the Scion FRS makes it the first Scion vehicle to now wear Toyota badging. To make it 100% Toyota, the 86 gets more aggressive with a new front end and a bit more horsepower, up to 205. The Toyota 86 is an incredible value for the performance you receive. 575 horsepower, 0 to 60 in less time than it takes you to put on your seatbelt. It's this vehicle right here, the 2017 Jaguar F-Type SVR. This is the coupe, also comes in a convertible. There's no better person to tell us about this vehicle than the managing director of the Special Vehicle Operations Group, John Edwards. John, let's talk about this special vehicle. The clue's in the word special, clearly. What we do is push the boundaries. This is lighter, it's got more power, it's more aerodynamic, ultimately it's faster. 200 miles an hour, it's a fantastic car. The Jaguar F-Type SVR definitely gets your adrenaline pumping. It's a car that sets a new benchmark for performance. A car that everyone is talking about. It's the epitome of a supercar and the first Jaguar to wear the coveted SVR badge. Powered by a supercharged V8 and producing 575 horsepower under the hood, the 0-60 to 60 time is a blistering 3.5 seconds. The top speed will put you back in your seats at 200 miles per hour and the F-Type SVR's all-wheel drive and paired with an 8-speed transmission. Both F-Types come with Jaguar's best-in-class 5-year, 60,000-mile coverage that includes scheduled maintenance, service intervals, and roadside assistance. Plus, Jaguar's in-control technology that ensures both you and your Jaguar are looked after 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year. One question consumers in the marketplace that are going to have for a vehicle like this, when is it going on sale? goes on sale in the fall, I think that's what you'd, what you'd say over here. We put it into production in uh, the next month, so it'll be on sale in the fall. All right, here we go. It's the Jaguar F-Type SVR Coupe. Get your credit card ready. This is one hot car for you. 
You know, every time you look at Jeep sales, they are soaring. They're in double figures. And it's not just in the United States, but in the whole world. And to feed that need for more Jeeps, they're introducing two brand new models here in New York. Right out of the box, Jeep showed the capabilities of their Grand Cherokees by driving the Trailhawk version down the steps inside the New York International Auto Show. Jeep brings in two new trim levels, the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk and the Grand Cherokee Summit. The Grand Cherokee has quickly become the go-to off-road SUV for American adventurers, and the new 2017 Trailhawk will capitalize on the go-anywhere, anytime mentality. And for those that want to save money on fuel and have clean diesel, Jeep offers a 3-liter EcoDiesel V6 on either trim. The Summit is in response to customers asking for a more luxurious 4x4. The premium interior sports a leather-wrapped dashboard, center console, and door panels, and the company's highest grade available leather seats. The cabin features acoustic glass and active noise cancellation, premium Berber carpet mats, and a 19-speaker Harman Kardon 825-watt audio system. This expands the lineup as the company celebrates three-quarters of a century and looks forward to continuing onward. The new trims will be rolling into dealerships later this summer. If you're in the market for something small and luxurious, then look to Buick. The Encore crossover accounted for a third of Buick sales in 2015. The automaker is now established as a provider of small SUVs with record sales in New York. The new exterior design takes some notes from the popular Avista concept, combining a sculptural surface with a new winged grille and signature rear LED lights. Buick, a leader in connectivity, includes the new IntelliLink infotainment system and a seven-device Wi-Fi hotspot. The company also includes Buick's quiet tuning with Bose-enhanced noise cancellation technology. Safety systems include lane departure and blind spot alerts, as well as rear parking assist. And the new Encore goes on sale this fall and is expected to be priced in the mid $20,000 range. When we return, we'll show you what a $2.8 million car looks like. Genesis will show off the car of the future and we'll see Maserati jump into the SUV segment. That and more when our Fox Sports coverage of the New York International Auto Show continues. Watching the New York Auto Show on Fox Sports. Except for Jaguar's F-Pace, the German makes have pretty much owned the luxury performance SUV segment. Well, we all knew that the Italians wouldn't sit easily in the pits at Nürburgring as these uber-fast SUVs whizzed by. In 2003, Maserati introduced the Caban concept, and now finally, the Levante. Is this a serious off-roader? Well, not really. Is it serious? Yes. The Levante is an all-wheel drive performer, but it has five ride heights, so it can handle pretty much everything you throw in front of it. Starting up front with that unmistakable Trident ready for the charge. Under the hood, an optional setup with the standard twin-turbo V6 that makes some serious software tweaks and intake and exhaust magic to jet the Levante 0 to 60 in just 5.2 seconds. Seriously. Inside is Sirius 2, from the carbon fiber trim to the Xenia silk interiors and audio perfection of Bowers & Wilkins surround sound system. We wanted to make something that was fully capable for all the off-road capabilities of an SUV, but also very much a Maserati at heart. And the folks at Maserati tell me that they weren't able to build the Levante until they had the Ghibli platform in place and refurbished the plant. With more on luxury SUVs, here's Mike. Auto shows are all about big press conferences, lots of unveils. And here in New York, there are 29 products being debuted here at the Auto Show. And this is one right here. This is the 2017 Acura MDX. And we're joined today by John Mendel, Executive Vice President, American Honda. I saw the NSX earlier in the week. I just heard that this new MDX has the DNA of the NSX in it. Tell me about it. It shares actually a number of things technologically, but powertrain, three motor hybrid system, same system on the NSX. Gives you dynamics beyond belief in terms of cornering, stopping, regenerative braking, those kinds of things. And with the new diamond pentagon grille, the new exterior is sporty as well. 
The interior is newly refined with soft leather captain's chairs for second row passengers and real wood trim accents line the interior. The MDX is also the world's best-selling third row luxury SUV of all time. Here's the kicker. The reason why families should consider the MDX? There are eight USB connection locations throughout the MDX that allow you to power your devices the battle between Cadillac and Lincoln continues more than 100 plus years. The battle between the two big luxury American car companies. All right, next to me right now is the brand new Lincoln Navigator. Today, we have a special guest with us, Mark Fields, Chief Executive Officer for Ford Motor Company. All right, I gotta ask you about this design styling thing going on with Ford Motor Company and Lincoln right now. Tell me about the design and what is inspiring the company with this new look? Well, when you think about where we're taking Lincoln, it's, it's around delivering luxury with an elegance, with a refinement, with effortless power. And we're here showing our Lincoln Navigator concept, which was really inspired by high-end yachts and high-end airplanes and things of that nature. The Navigator concept sports gold-wing doors that replace both the driver and rear passenger doors with one long door. Concertina steps drop down from both sides of the Navigator for easy access into the vehicle. Inspired by luxury sailboats and yachts, the Navigator comes with a wardrobe management system. Large high-definition monitors are mounted in the rear headrests and a Bluetooth intercom system allows for the driver to speak to passengers in the rear with an amplified voice. We'll be introducing our new Lincoln Navigator into the marketplace in 2017, so next year. And this concept is, gives you a very good indication of what it's going to look like, minus the goal wing doors. That's just for the, for the concept purpose. If you're looking to save a little money on fuel and the environment, perhaps you're looking for a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. And the first one in the world arrives here at the New York show going on sale soon. Don Swearingen is here. You are the vice president at uh, Mitsubishi Motors. I'm very proud this car is here, but it took a while to get to the United States. We launched it in Japan first and then into Europe. Uh, we had great success. It became the number one selling PHEV in Europe. And because of that, the supply was very limited. So we didn't want to bring it into the U.S. unless we could clearly supply it to all of our customers and our dealers here in the U.S. The Outlander PHEV delivers a clean and efficient drive by automatically switching between the car's three motors. In EV mode, it becomes a 100% electric powered, zero emission vehicle. You'll still get all the benefits of a combustion engine while being eco-friendly. Mitsubishi plans to include all of their safety features, including the full-stop crash mitigation and pedestrian detection. The Outlander PHEV will start showing up in dealers this summer. But if you don't like the look and feel of a regular hybrid, then Kia has the answer for you. A hybrid SUV that doesn't look like a hybrid. This is the smallest Kia SUV ever built and has a projected 50 miles a gallon. A dedicated hybrid crossover, it uses a 1.6 liter Kappa GDI engine with 103 horsepower paired to a 32 kilowatt electric motor and a 1.56 kWh lithium ion battery pack for a total output of 146 horsepower. Power is transferred to the road by a six-speed double clutch transmission. The new Kia Nero promises high levels of practicality and comfortable interior dimensions, despite its reduced size, with class-leading headroom and cargo capacity. Now, Kia tell us they will have 11 electrified vehicles in the next five years, and we just got confirmation that the Nero will come in a plug-in hybrid electric version. Mercedes has been making a big push for the commercial van business in the U.S. A lot of people don't realize just how big their commercial van business is, but they've been making commercial vans for over 100 years. This is their latest. It's the Mercedes Sprinter Worker. Just look inside this thing. It's massively cavernous, literally 319 cubic feet of space up front, a workmanlike setup with an interior that can be hosed out. Two other selling points. This Sprinter Worker starts at 32.5, and you get a whopping 20,000 miles between maintenance visits. The Mercedes Sprinter Worker is arriving in dealerships now. Now coming up next, the latest in electrics, more SUVs, sports cars, and how automated driving is coming to the masses. It's all coming to you as Fox Sports presents the New York International Auto Show.
watching the New York Auto Show on Fox Sports. Hyundai is introducing the all-new Ionic here in New York, and with it, they become the world's first automaker to offer one model with plug-in hybrid, hybrid, or all-electric version. The plug-in Ionic has a range of more than 25 miles, and the EV model, it can go up to 110 miles, while the hybrid can go a full 600 miles between Phillips. Inside, loads of tech, including a charging pad for your smartphone. And part of the efficiency of the Ionic is actually in the grill. Check out how the shutters open and close to make it more aerodynamic at speed, giving the car a class-leading .24 drag coefficient. Now, Hyundai execs told me they also wanted to separate the Ionic from other hybrids by making it more fun to drive. It's got a great center of gravity for very good balance and responsiveness, and the powertrain is very responsive with a dual-clutch transmission, which means you get quick rapid shifts and no sense of a motorboating feel that you get with some other hybrids. Look for the Ionic when it comes out this fall. No pricing announced. Now for more on electrics, Mike. Love the Ionic Tour. With gas prices still relatively low nationwide, consumers are clamoring for plug-in hybrid electric vehicles like this one right here. It's the Kia Optima plug-in hybrid. And with an all-out electric range of 27 miles on a single charge and a combined 600 miles between the gas and electric motor, it's really the powertrain that sets this Kia apart. What makes it unique is that the electric motor replaces the torque converter. So the benefit for the consumer is it's a lot more straightforward driving experience. The Optima Hybrid's exterior is quite sporty for a mid-level sedan, and it's packed with great safety and technology features. Kia is offering driver assistance systems that are normally associated with higher-end vehicles. Blind spot detection, smart cruise control, lane departure warning, and front collision warning are also offered. To help aid drivers with parking maneuvers, surround view monitoring utilizes cameras and sensors to make parking easier. The interior integrates a series of smart technologies as well. A wireless phone charging system is integrated into the center console and Kia's infotainment systems include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. With the Kia Optima plug-in, it's all about the advanced electric technology. But the real question is, does it stack up to the Toyota Prius? With the all-new Prius Prime, expect to see the highest MPGE rating of any other plug-in hybrid on the market. Toyota is also estimating the electric range to be 22 miles, up to 84 miles per hour, and a total electric range of 120 MPGE. Charging is estimated at five and a half hours based on a standard outlet, but with a 240 outlet, the time is cut in half. The interior features a large 11.6-inch multimedia high-definition heads-up display and wireless charging system for your smartphone. A standard USB port can be used for charging and for connecting to your infotainment system. The front receives a facelift that makes the Prius look slightly more aggressive. The Prime comes with Toyota's Safety Sense P-Suite, which includes automatic braking and lane departure warning with steering assist that gently nudges the car back into your lane and not to mention full-speed radar cruise control with full-stop technology. All right, that's it for me. What do you got, Nick? Thanks, Mike. The autonomous car is not years away. It's not months away. It could be as little as weeks away. And automakers are including some autonomous car features in vehicles that are in showrooms today. It's called ADAS, or Advanced Driver Assisted Systems. The idea is that they automate and make your drive safer with modern technology. Sensors and cameras built into the vehicle can help a car's system adapt to driving conditions, and internal technology can connect your car to GPS, traffic warnings, and smartphones. The biggest news in this segment is that 20 world automakers have just agreed to make automatic braking standard on cars by 2022. But does that autonomous braking actually work? Yes, it does. We tested the pedestrian detection system on one of our producers and the car stopped automatically without hitting him. The BMW 7 Series has been built with ADAS. You can now take your hands off the wheel for up to 10 seconds and do something like reach for your sunglasses. While you do that, the car will steer itself. One of the best systems I think we have is our active cruise control uh, with stop and go system. With the cruise control, it can sense the car in front of you, bring the car to a complete stop with you ever having to touch the brakes, and it will even start back up again and follow that car in front of you. Hondas are getting into advanced driver assisted systems with the North American car of the year, the Civic. It shows off capabilities of ADAS with features like lane keep assist, 
alerting you when you begin to drift out of your lane without signaling. The Honda Civic EX model even adds the benefit of lane watch technology, providing drivers with a live camera feed of your blind spot on the passenger side when you use the right signal. While safety is the main selling point, the new systems can also offer convenience. Ford's current Active Park Assist system can identify suitable parallel parking spots and will even steer the vehicle into place while the driver controls the brakes and acceleration. Having parking problems? Audi have developed a system where you can get out of your car on the street and it will go off and park itself in a parking garage until you need to retrieve it. Then it'll come back down to meet you. Now a lot of these features will be available on the autonomous car of tomorrow, but for today they're defining safety standards for the modern automaker. From the smallest cars to the biggest trucks and a concept which is named after the city it was revealed in. All that and more as our Fox Sports coverage of the New York International Auto Show continues. You're watching the New York Auto Show on Fox Sports. And welcome back. Well, Toyota is celebrating 50 years of the Corolla in the U.S. And what a better way to celebrate than a party. Jan, what do you say? Let's go. All the stars showed up. The first generation Corolla packing 60 horsepower. Original selling price, $1,700. The 1986 Corolla, the first year the Corolla was built in California. And it's the car that started the drifting movement. And of course, the new 50th anniversary edition Corolla with special badging a new front fascia design with an updated LED lighting configuration. Only 8,000 will be made. There's certainly a lot to celebrate. Realize the Corolla can be credited with changing the auto industry, as its success taught Detroit many lessons on how to make reliable cars. It's really helped establish people's perception of Toyota and Corolla as quality, dependable, reliable, safe, and great value. And that's really helped set the stage for a lot of Toyota success here in the U.S. and globally. Now, to put things in perspective, VW has sold 25 million Beetles. The Corolla, 43 million. It's the best-selling car ever. Hmm, you got to wonder how many Facebook friends they have. The other thing that's small, compact, and beautiful and being shown at this year's show, apart from me, is the Mitsubishi Mirage G4, seen for the first time in New York. The G4 stands for Global Four-Door, offering buyers an affordable four-door sedan in the subcompact segment. A new car for second-hand car money starting at under $14,000. It comes well-equipped with several smartphone integrations like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, usually reserved for high-priced vehicles. Already available in Asia, it's no wonder that the Mirage is selling as fast as the company can make them. They're selling in three months what they had predicted for a whole year. Appearing at the New York show with a whole new look is the Chevy Sonic. Chevy revised the 2017 model styling and added some new technology. You will notice that they carried over some of the styling cues from the new Bolt. Very noticeable is the new front fascia styling, which takes on the Chevy double grille design. It will come in both a five-door and a four-door sedan version with optional turbo. This is a car clearly aimed at the younger buyer, who tend to keep their cars for longer. We asked Van Lai from the Chevy design team how they keep modern buyers relevant to the processes that take four years to complete. We're factoring in a lot of components that over the course of time during um, the program development may change. Looking at technology, working with our global suppliers so that when we release it, it's as fresh as possible. The Sonic comes equipped with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a seven inch touchscreen display. Now the good news is the Chevy Sonic will be arriving in dealerships this fall. It will be continued to be made at the uh, GM Orion assembly plant, which is in Orion Township in Michigan. Mike?
Over my shoulder, it's the Tonka 4Runner that was showcased at the SEMA show earlier this year, but there's a lot more to talk about in this booth. This is their big news right here. It's the all new 2017 Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. What does that mean? This thing was designed for the off-road driver, whether it's rock climbing or Baja pre-chasing. It's got Fox shocks under it and rigid industry lights integrated into the front part of this vehicle. All the way around, this thing is meant to perform. We start with the best-selling mid-size pickup and we take it to a whole new level and we're really targeting the off-road enthusiasts out there. With its impressive off-road capabilities, the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro is also a daily driver. It wouldn't be a Toyota without top-of-the-line safety features as well, like blind spot monitoring and rear cross-traffic alert. But it's all about off-roading and creating memories with the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. So to make those memories last forever, Toyota integrated a GoPro mount onto the top portion of the windshield to share those memories with friends. Designed in California, engineered in Michigan, tested in Arizona, assembled in Mississippi, and it's powered by America and it's big. The all new 2017 Nissan XD Titan Endurance. Nissan paid great attention as to what consumers are looking for, building not only features for the family, but also building the features for the people who were actually there to work the truck. Nissan launched its new Titan here at the New York International Auto Show, and between the Titan Half Ton and the Titan XD, both are making news. The Half Ton is 14 inches shorter than the XD, and the wheelbase is nearly a foot shorter as well. Pricing is not yet available, but expect both a 4x4 and 4x2 option, along with a king cab and three bed size options. As an aside, the interiors are pretty much the same on both trucks. The Titan also comes with a 7-speed transmission for incredible low-end towing capabilities, not to mention better fuel efficiency, with adaptive shift control and downshift revolution matching to better control towing during stops and downhill runs. The XD is powered by a 5.6 liter V8 pumping out 390 horsepower, but it's the 401 foot-pounds of torque that make this truck a Titan. If you look at the list of amenities these days on the typical sedan, it really appears more like a list of demands. Automatic braking, heated rear seats, lane departure warning, the list goes on and on. For Kia, it's more of an opportunity, and they think they have the answer with the all-new Cadenza. This second generation luxury car from the value brand was designed in the US. Kia believes that its offering will continue to attract value conscious buyers. Walking around the new Cadenza, you can see the refinements from the new concave look tiger nose grille, a new lighting setup that Kia refers to as Z mirroring and piano key LEDs at the rear. Inside a new wraparound dash with Napa leather as an option Note the stitching and quilted seat bolsters. Yes, you have to remind yourself this is a Kia. The Condensa even offers an eight inch head up display and surround view monitor, which of course includes CarPlay and Android Auto and even wireless phone charging. And the new Condensa's technology extends to better driving dynamics. Kia is using double the high strength steel over the outgoing Condensa for more rigidity and more responsive steering due to a new 32 bit processor. And of course, Kia offers smart stop and go cruise control with autonomous emergency braking. And although Kia has not stated their fuel economy ratings, they are saying that the retuned V6 will generate more power, 290 horses now, and still deliver better fuel economy. Coming up, the latest sedans, SUVs, and what's the fastest car here at the show? We're gonna show you. It's all here as Fox Sports presents the New York Auto Show. Those coming to the New York Auto Show will notice a new name on the show floor. It's called Genesis, and it's the new upscale brand from Hyundai. Now, Hyundai gave Genesis not only its own space, but it's separate from the Hyundai booth. They currently have two cars in their lineup, the G80 and the more luxurious G90. The G90 is meant to compete with the likes of the S-Class or BMW 7 Series, has nice big screens, 
beautiful wood trim, massaging and reclining rear seats, and of course that Autobahn-like experience. Genesis is also introducing a new concept here. It's the New York, and here to tell us more about it is Jim Trainer. Jim, tell us about the concept. New York concept, just shown yesterday for the very first time. Our design studio in Europe brought it over for us to see. 2.2 liter GDI turbo engine. Really the next generation of the athletic elegance design language that you first saw in the Vision G concept car. Okay, now let's go inside the car because you have some unique technology. Right. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's really a, a, a high-tech interior of the car. Probably the coolest thing is a uh, swipe without touching uh, feature that has a, a number of screens that you can move over to a bigger screen for easier visibility by the driver or the passenger. And that's something that we haven't seen before. We also have a bowl that's finger activated that you can quickly move through your contacts or your music to get to who you're looking for or the song that you want to play. There you go. So look for the new Genesis brand coming to a Hyundai dealership near you. If you're in the market for a four-door sedan with a taste of luxury, check this out. It's the all-new 2017 Buick LaCrosse. It not only gets wider, but it also gets longer. Let's find out what people are going to be talking about. The first thing consumers will notice on the all-new 2017 Buick LaCrosse is the design. Taking its styling cues from the Buick Avenir concept, the pronounced new grille is inspired by the 1954 Wildcat concept. The LaCrosse is 300 pounds lighter than the current model, and the interior is both luxurious and spacious. Buick also stretched the length of the LaCrosse to provide more cabin space. The interior is well appointed and the plush captain seats include an optional lumbar massage feature for the driver's pleasure. Buick integrated an all new wireless charging station in the center console and a new teen driver alert system that allows parents to keep tabs on their kids driving habits. The center display is 8 inches and provides passengers with a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot powered by a 3.6 liter V6 with an 8-speed automatic transmission. Standard features will include start-stop technology, keyless entry, and front pedestrian braking. One of the emerging trends is SUV coupes. Mercedes-Benz no stranger to that trend. In fact, they've thrown all the bells and whistles into the new GLC class coupe. With a streamlined silhouette and compact size, the GLC crossover coupe really combines the best of both worlds. The crossover design takes some cues from the popular S-Class while remaining true to the design sense of the GLC model. What these cars, it really it brings together the beauty and the design elements of a coupe with the form and the functionality of an SUV. It shows off a touch of racing detail on the side, which leads into the athletically designed rear end. Featuring Mercedes-Benz signature lighting, the interior receives the coupe treatment with a single-piece console panel and an integrated media display. But clearly, lines convey the spaciousness of an SUV to the passenger. When it comes to luxury in design, Mercedes-Benz is clearly not one to skimp on the details. With the GLC class coupe, they've definitely proved they have a hand in the crossover market. Hyundai want to make sure that every row is well served in the new Santa Fe, putting USB outlets in the third row. On the floor of this year's New York International Auto Show, the Santa Fe offers a sporty enhanced design, high-tech infotainment, convenience and safety features. Following up on their 2016 version Kelly Blue Book and Consumer Guide accolades, the Santa Fe shows Hyundai's commitment to providing affordability and performance in the crossover market. The Santa Fe gets a new look from the front and rear with redesigned grille and lights that are available as LEDs. Hyundai's approach to the interior offers a 5-inch full-color LCD display system and makes several smart features like Android Auto and Hyundai's Blue Link available on new models. Finally, they reiterate their focus on safety by featuring rear-view cameras as standard. And Hyundai have included automatic emergency braking and pedestrian detection systems. Santa Fe also features accident-proof systems with lane departure warning, automatic dynamic lighting, multi-view cameras, and more. It definitely shows why the Sport received the NHTSA 5-star safety rating and why Hyundai are expecting the IIHS top safety pick. 
The brand new Santa Fe and Santa Fe Sport are heading to dealerships right now for a starting price of $23,350. And just for an extra $2,000, you can get all-wheel drive. Toyota introduces a new mid-size SUV, the Highlander, here in New York. Starting up front, they have a new fascia out back, new rear taillights. Listening to their customers, Toyota has added a lot of options, a lot of which you don't see. Hybrids used to only be available in the two top trims. Now you can get it on almost all trim levels. Note that all hybrids are all-wheel drive. It's powered by a new 3.5-liter engine with more horses. They're not saying how many, but I hear the buyers will notice a big difference. That engine is also made to a new 8-speed transmission. Inside, customers can opt for a bench or a captain's row. But I think the bigger deal is with the USB ports. Toyota went from 1 to 5 on the new Highlander. You can also get it equipped with Toyota Safety Sense, a package of safety technologies including automatic emergency braking, dynamic radar cruise control, and lane departure alert, which literally helps guide you back into your lane. And Toyota tells me that the Highlander is a major export out of Indiana where all Highlanders are made, currently exporting to 12 countries. More sports cars, including the latest 640 horsepower beast from GM. And if you have $2.8 million laying around, I found the car for you. Hello, you're watching the New York Auto Show on Fox Sports. And welcome back. Now, what do you get when you cross a 5-liter twin-turbo V8 with three electric motors? How about 1,500 horsepower and a 0 to 60 time in only 2.8 seconds? Yes, you heard that right, 2.8 seconds. The exotic make Koenigsegg crossed the pond to show their Regera. They also are showing this. It's the Koenigsegg 1 to 1. The name refers to its unworldly power-to-weight ratio. It's the only car on the planet that offers one horsepower for every kilo. The car weighs 1,360 kilos and has 1,360 horsepower. Price, 2.8 million ones. This is a key to a Kona Seg. It's made from platinum and diamonds. Now, for now, there's only one one-to-one -one in the U.S. For a little more value in sports cars, here's Mike. Every year at the auto show, there's a show stopper. There's an automaker that brings a vehicle to the show that you're not expecting. That vehicle at the New York International Auto Show is this vehicle right here. It's the all-new 2017 Mazda MX-5 RF. No better person to tell us about it, Julian Montese. He's the director of design for Mazda. He's going to tell us a little bit more about what makes this Mazda Miata tick. Tell us about it, Julian. Well, you know, in terms of design, we really shoot for the ideal state. What we mean by that is really to establish the silhouette of a classical fastback. True core automotive enthusiasts love the Mazda Miata. Yes, it's small, but that's what makes this pure convertible sports car one of the most fun-filled cars of all time. The Mazda MX-5 RF, showcased here in New York at the auto show, is the second motor-driven retractable hardtop Mazda has offered. Now in its fourth generation, this Miata is completely new and includes a beautifully styled and functional retractable hardtop convertible. Mazda strive to give the Miata a fastback look with the top closed and a traditional convertible look with the top down. The top can open or close at speeds up to 6 miles per hour. Although the trunk capacity is the same as previous Miatas, the retractable hardtop seamlessly drops behind the center seats so that you still have room for your golf clubs. Sound dampening was critical with this Miata's interior as engineers worked to include as much insulation as possible to reduce exterior noise. The Mazda Skyactiv 2.0-liter powertrain is the right choice for this Miata paired with a 6-speed manual transmission. Safety features in the Miata include blind spot monitoring, high beam control, which switches between low and high beam lights, and Mazda Connect, which allows both the driver and passenger to stay connected while enjoying a drive. So another car that was a world debut here in New York is the brand new GTR. Michael Bunce is here from Nissan North America. You're involved in planning these cars and, and putting the development together for the future, right? Yes, Nick, my job is I'm the Vice President of Product Planning for Nissan North America, and my job is to deliver these products to the market. 
and the 2017 GTR is the most significant iteration that we put in market. The 2017 GTR features some significant changes that enhance its driving experience. An updated standard 565 horsepower engine and a flattened torque curve gives it more on-demand acceleration while a V-Motion grille not only boosts engine cooling, but connects the car with the new GTR brand design portfolio. Since the introduction of the Generation 6 in 2015, 30,000 GTRs have been sold, with 30% of the sales coming from North America. So Nissan chose the last big American auto show to pull the silks off the new GTR in New York. If you're hoping for a new GTR in your driveway, you can look forward to having one sometime this summer. You can always count on Chevy to pull the muscle into their sports cars. They don't make any exceptions even when it comes to their drop tops. The new 2017 Camaro ZL1 convertible rips the 6.2 V8 engine right out of the Corvette and puts it into the Camaro Alpha Dog body. Chevy is still fine-tuning the ZL1 convertible and will pull as much power out of the model as possible. This is in part due to the convertible's lighter frame and the designers say they'll be working on making it even faster and lighter. With the ZL1 convertible, Chevy is also introducing a 10-speed automatic transmission alongside the traditional 6-speed manual setup. They fine-tune the new auto to the ferocious settings of the new convertible and expect to get even higher torque and horsepower before the release date. Chevy tell us that the iconic ZL1 has been reinvented for the sixth generation Camaro and purposely redesigned to go up against some of the world's best sports coupes. And by the look of things, it definitely will. And we're joined once again by Jack Nerad. Jack, another great show. I mean, literally a lot of introductions here. Let's talk about the CUVs. I'm gonna start small, the Buick Encore. Buick Encore has been a home run for Buick. I mean, it's a big, big vehicle for them in terms of sales. It's about a third of their sales. They have completely changed it for 2017, I upgraded the exterior, interior has some new features like push button start. I think it's gonna be a big winner for them. You know, when you look at Navigator, that's a fun concept. It's just wild. I mean, gull wing doors on a big SUV. I mean, probably won't see the production light of day, but it's so cool to see something like that. You know, for me, something interesting too is that uh, Jeep continues to expand their Grand Cherokee. What are your thoughts? Well, Grand Cherokee is such a great brand. I mean, people recognize that as a iconic Jeep. Uh, it's a, a great volume of play for them. They sell a lot of them. Uh, so expanding that brand makes a heck of a lot of sense. And continuing on SUVs, you have Acura with their MDX. The MDX is so important to the Acura brand. It's their mainstay vehicle, high volume for them. They want to check off all the boxes on that, and I think they've done so. You have the performance with the uh, Levante from Maserati. Just a kind of beyond belief performance. We're seeing so much performance these days from so many manufacturers in so many different types of vehicles. Just terrific stuff. Of course, I have to mention the GTR. GTR is, you know, from Nissan, kind of otherworldly performance in some ways. It's just so much fun to drive. Every manufacturer is upping the ante these days. On the more affordable side, Mazda, you know, with the RF uh, on the MX-5? The RF, I think, will really be a litmus test for people. Some people are going to love that new retractable hardtop, and some are not going to like it. The good news for Roadster fans is the Roadster will still be there. You can still get that. But if you want that retractable hardtop, you can also get a coupe as a bonus. Okay, let's move to electrics. You have the Ionic. Hyundai's doing some really interesting things with the Ionic. A lot going on with one vehicle and people can kind of take their choice. And they're trying to work on the drivability too. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, hybrids are pretty boring to drive, right? I mean, they get great fuel economy, but in terms of fun to drive, just wasn't there. But then we've seen what uh, Toyota has done with their new Prius. What are your thoughts on the new Prius plug-in? It's going to be spectacular, I think. One interesting thing is they've changed the look of the front end of the car as well. So it's not just a, a functional change, but it also is something that looks different. Jack, unfortunately, we're out of time here. For Nick Miles, Mike Caudill, I'm Tor Dietrich. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the road.